In this demonstration, we will see how to implement Volume Activation 2.0 in Windows Server 2008. To begin, let's look at the infrastructure required for Volume Activation 2.0. We have an administrator who has been issued a Volume License Edition product key. The administrator designates one computer as the Key Management Service, or KMS, host. The administrator then uses the slmgr command to input the product key into the KMS host server. Once the product key has been input, the administrator again uses the slmgr command to activate the key management service. During this process, the KMS connects to the Microsoft activation servers and validates the Volume License Edition product key. Once the KMS has started, it will register service records in DNS. These records are used by Volume License Editions of Windows to locate an available KMS host and attempt to activate. Now that the KMS has been activated and the service records are registered in DNS, we can begin to activate Volume License Editions of Windows Server 2008. When a Volume License Edition of Windows Server 2008 starts, it attempts to locate a KMS by querying DNS for the service records published by the KMS. If it locates a KMS, it attempts to connect to that KMS and activate. A minimum of five physical Windows Server 2008 KMS clients must attempt to activate before volume license editions of Windows Server 2008 will begin to activate. The first four KMS clients will fail. However, when the fifth client attempts to activate, all clients will be able to activate. Next, let's look at how we can use these tools on Windows Server 2008. Here I have a Windows Server 2008 computer that I have designated as my KMS host. I have already registered a Volume License Edition product key using the slmgr command. This product key was a Server Group B key, which allows me to activate all Volume License Editions of Windows Vista and Windows Server 2008, excluding Windows Server 2008 Data Center Editions and Windows Server 2008 Itanium-based systems. The next step is to activate the KMS. This is done by running the slmgr-ato command. After a short delay, you receive a message that the product has been successfully activated. You can verify the activation status by running the slmgr-dlv command. This command displays information such as the activation ID and a partial product key. It also shows the activation end date. There is other important information in this output as well. The current count value shows how many KMS clients have attempted to activate, as well as the default port for the KMS and the DNS publishing status. The final area shows total requests received, as well as the total activations. If a server connects before the required number of physical KMS clients is reached, also known as the activation threshold, the activation attempt will fail. The server will try again after a short wait period and if the KMS host has registered five total attempts to activate by five unique physical KMS clients, it will return a KMS count value which allows the KMS client to activate. It's worth noting that virtual machines do not count as unique physical computers, however still function as KMS clients. Next, let's look at the records that are published in DNS. Here we have a DNS server which contains the DNS records for my domain. You can see that in the underscore TCP domain of the contoso.com domain, there is an underscore VLMCS service record. This is the record that identifies the KMS host. Finally, we can use the event viewer to verify the KMS is receiving activation requests. The event viewer contains a log for the key management service. This log records attempts to activate and is useful as a tool to verify the clients are correctly resolving and connecting to the KMS. For the final part of this demonstration, I will go ahead and activate a Volume License Edition of Windows Server 2008. It is important to understand that this process is being performed manually for the purpose of this demonstration only. The process of activation is fully automatic once the KMS host has been activated and is publishing service records in DNS. First, I am going to manually set the value of my KMS. This is useful as a troubleshooting step or when DNS is not available. Next, I will run the slmgr-ato command to activate the client. Finally, we can review the activation status by typing slmgr-dlv. This command shows us several important pieces of information, such as the license status, the activation expiration, as well as the activation interval and renewal interval. 
The activation interval is how long the computer will wait after a failed activation attempt before attempting to reactivate. The renewal interval is how long the computer will wait with a valid activation before attempting to renew that activation. In this demonstration, you saw how to implement Volume Activation 2.0 on Windows Server 2008. Volume Activation 2.0 is a very easy technology to implement and requires very little effort on the part of a network administrator.